Yeah, Kundalini is uh, is a uh an amazing force. I mean, Kundalini is a, it's sentient. So, you know, I've been tracking its origins. Well, I spent a lot of time tracking the origins of Kundalini. And it appears that, you know, there's some kind of ancient uh, motherly kind of being um, that's very powerful. It kind of just ties into the whole sentience of the entire reality. And the uh, wonder and we ended up communicating. I, I was in a band for eight years called Kundalini. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. The way you tracked me down. No. <laughs> yeah, the, the band, the Kundalini. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. And that, and that's honestly what it is. It's uh it's a band of light in every tense. Um, it's collective. It's what's running through us. And uh, it's also what causes a lot of synchronicities and, and causes a lot of same ideas. You know, I got everyone kind of argue like who I, whose idea it was because it just all came to us at the same time. And right. then, but Kundalini is, is also something that uh, needs to be matured within each individual. It's like each person has their own Kundalini. And that's kind of why, you know, some people have a Kundalini awakening and some people don't. And then even with, after the Kundalini awakening, the Kundalini has to then be uh, guided uh, further through the chakra center so that it has its own quest. So it's kind of like the mini game. Mm -hmm. going on but it should be rather major but within every person's body there is kundalini that is attempting to make its full ascension and then also once it does to then come back down which is the ank the ank symbol um Mm -hmm. i think in the pyramid text it basically sums the whole thing up that uh these commands were aware that we were to become an ank and uh and that's what the destiny of every being here on the planet was and so then everyone just tried to go and try to figure out well what did the ankh really mean and one of the the symbols uh, what it, one of the things it really meant besides you know a circle on a straight line which gives you pretty much everything was the ability to not just do the whole ascension thing but also be aware of the descension process, which is something that you tend to not get too many people who want to participate in that class. But what it's really like is it's, it's like when you do get this calling or whatever, you get this awakening, you get all this information. Now it becomes like seeds that you must distribute into the soil again, not into the air. So because it's got to go into the soil, these secrets, if you may, or secretions, if you may, someone's got to take it there. So that's the actual process to where even when you're on on height, let's say, you've discovered, discovered that you are God and beyond that, you now must go back down to hell in a tense. Yeah, but right. it doesn't bother you. And this is kind of like the whole, again, the crisis kundalini is the whole process of, you know, you go back down and you can go into hell in a tense, and this is just a lower vibratory frequency, and then you can begin to distribute the jewels and, you know, the seeds, and you're just kind of like the one in there under disguise, if you may, because, you know, it's like, yeah, that's how it works. And so that's that's a part of the major process with Kundalini is it's a very sentient, it's very also, um, I won't say dangerous, but what I'll say is, is that because when every time the Kundalini moves into a different space, it has another challenge. And mm-hmm. it's always diametrically opposed to the previous challenge. So in one tense, it could be to love. And then some people could spend their whole life in that lesson and trying to figure out how to really love someone. And But if they make it through that chakra, the next could be how to have courage. Yeah, And that's kind of like another lesson. And so how they drew it, especially in the Eastern traditions, is that each chakra had this kind of like being. And it's always like, you know, this teeth. And you know, mm-hmm. they just show it in the craziest way because it becomes this next opponent, if you may, that you yeah. need to get through in order to get Kundalini to progress into the next stage. And so I've definitely, uh, you know, behold, we saw the ladder going up and down is actually what it means. Uh, that That traditional text itself means that it, this is not just about ascension. The actual ladder goes down too. So once you get right. up there, you need to also learn how to get down. Right, right. And it's a, it's yeah. also uh, dormant uh, in most people uh, are considered to be dormant at the base of the spine, right? And then if you raise, mm-hmm. actually activate it and raise it up the spine through the chakras and it kind of, actually the um, medical symbols derived from kind of a, a yeah. pictogram of the kundalini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. the, the well, snakes it's or the, the energy. Is a, is, is a complete symbol of the whole body. 
uh, right. with the two Kundalini channels and then the spine, because those two snakes are actually known as zigzag, and those are basically going uh, the, the zigzag way up the tree instead of the straight and narrow path, which many yeah. of us have choose to go the zigzag that's like bad good and you know i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that and i believe this is right and I, I don't believe this is right and that's kind of zigzagging because it has nothing to do with hey the straight and narrow way and right. yeah i mean I, I just find it to be quite a quest to deal with kundalini and, and one of the things that people should know is that the reason why kundalini is actually in the cossacks of the spine which is really f a fused bone mm -hmm. is through the pain and fear just like, you know, if someone scares you, you draw back. Yeah. So the Kundalini is actually underneath layers of strata because the, the Cossacks is our tail. And mm -hmm. etymology, of course, that's our story. And most people don't know their story until they wake Kundalini. And yeah. to wake Kundalini, they have to kind of push up, push through all of this strata, fear, you know, and all the stuff that's built on top of it in order to get it to at least go into its first chakra, which happens to be hell in, in the yeah. tense of the chakras, the root chakra and the fiery and Baal and all that. Right. And so this is why also, uh, you know, there's few Kundalini awakenings because it has a lot to do with confronting those fears and, you know, stirring up stuff that people would just as soon as not. And yeah. uh, so obviously this is a real time experience and, uh, and it's <laughs> something very serious. So, you know, when it has that kind of, Thing going on with it you know some choose to especially in this kind of world where a lot of things are just fabricated and you know no one wants to experience the pain and people want to turn away from their own selves so it's more in trend to not disturb kundalini <laughs> let, let the serpent lie sleeping <laughs> right <laughs> and also the wisdom <laughs> yeah exactly exactly because that's that's what's at the top of the the medical symbol is the wings right it representing yeah, that's the I would say enlightenment or yeah so, yeah, and, um, and this is also the the snake is the electric force, as in L, mm -hmm. it hisses and spits, and then the mm -hmm. magnetic force is the uh, is the bird, and uh -huh. and in evolution, snakes become birds. I mean, we figured yeah, that yeah, out yeah. already. But uh, right. the wing, the scales become wings, and this is the actual real process. Just like the Tyrannosaurus's closest cousin is the chicken. Yeah. So for all of that terrorizing. You become a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then you get eaten by, by mammals. Right. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it goes around, comes around. And it's really like that. You know, it's, it's like they call that divine comedy. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you, you made a comment on the last podcast that I wanted to ask you a little bit more about. You said... You know, we talked a little about reincarnation, and and we've talked a little bit about the origin of, of God and other entities, gods and other entities. You you made the comment that the oversoul is next for us. Can you elaborate on that one? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, if it all goes right, <laughs> or, or uh, actually if it goes wood. right and left, and then yeah. finally you figured out <laughs> that, that it needs to stay, you know, in, in balance, then... Obviously, the ne there's another level up, and the next level up is an oversoul. And, and what an oversoul is like what you see going on in nature that, you know, they're like breath, okay? Breath, many animals, insects, good people, bad people, whatever, have to breathe breath. Breath is an oversoul. Mm -hmm. Breath is closer to what we would have as a, any kind of idea of God, a real God, because it's not asking you any questions like, Oh, please breathe. Please breathe. Uh -huh. And if you breathe, then you'll get life. Or if you do something bad, then you don't, you won't breathe. This is like, it's none of those kind of dynamics. If you choose not to breathe, we'll be hollering at you because yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't have that kind of thing to it. And that's why they say, you know, those are real, uh, uh, supreme beings is that they, there's no option. Light is a supreme being. Like you don't take in light. We'll be seeing you later. Like we're even taking in light from the stars because it's going right through the pores of our house and yeah. you know if you go deep 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 in the earth to where a lot of light is not affecting you even far infrared you'll die really fast so yeah. it's like there's all these real elements not the characters in these stories um but there's these real elements that that we need and uh and so that's that's a big part of this is is to begin to realize that there's these other fuels that we have to get enough of 
and to start getting more familiar with in order to really transcend ourselves into this next stage of our consciousness. And that is an oversoul because the food, if you may, for an oversoul, it doesn't involve matter and mass. Yeah. There's no more living in the pranayama. There's no more the karma from eating and consuming. There's only this unlimited force that you can tap into and so yeah that that that's what this is really about is uh is identifying that procedure for yourself so that way you can go into your oversoul form and then in that tense and many of us are doing it now they so they say if you're if you multitask a lot you're getting prepared to go full on into your oversoul because that's like the preliminaries is to begin to understand how to operate several things at one time and it not just totally melt you down because, yeah. and, and, and that's what we're dealing with. And it's also not so much as a thought thing. Many people can do that in Zen. And in fact, in Zen, you can generally do a, a lot more and have less, you know, static with trying to do it. So that's what it's about is that next stage for us is definitely an oversoul. Oversoul it's one uh, more level up. Actually, I think there's look. I think there's one like preliminary level in between. So don't mm-hmm. uh, don't hold me to it. But Oversoul is somewhat up there, and it's just getting you more familiar with the process of being a planet mm-hmm. versus something that's wow. on a planet. Interesting.